Every day we have to give more than 100%. There is not another option. I can feel the fire. It's time to do it. Uh, welcome to MEFC Realist TV. My name is Mick Ruby, the host and presenter and the narrative of this exclusive story regarding Lisandro Martinez. The purpose of this video is to showcase who is Lisandro Martinez, taking you from his early career as a childhood, working with intermediates, his family life, from grassroots to the big stage. This is what this video is all about. It's an exclusive interview also with his intermediate agent that took him from Argentina to the Eredivisie and then facilitated for his big move to Manchester United. Please enjoy and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you haven't done so as of yet. It's time to do it. He's too short for the Premier League. Every single team that play United should target him. I'm convinced he can't work. Jamie Carragher. Huh? He can't compete. Gary Neville. Huh? He's vertically yeah. challenged. We're talking about the Premier League. He'll get fouled out. I can't tell you a centre-back in English football. In my time of the game, that's been successful being that size. Graham Souness. Six months later. Lissandro Martinez proved them wrong as six months later he went on to win the World Cup with Argentina and played a pivotal role in Eric Ten Hag's team to win a Carabao Cup, finishing third in the Premier League and almost getting the Premier League centre-back and player of the year award that if it wasn't for his injury later on that season. You see what Lissandro Martinez doesn't have in height, he compensates with his intelligence in how he anticipated the play and movements of his opponent applies his tenacity and tax the situation. That is why his nickname is The Butcher. And yes, British pundits have still not yet given him his flowers, despite his constant performance, putting in 8 out of 10 each single game. But in order to understand how Lissandro Martinez became the butcher, the person that changed the modern day centre back and silenced the hater, our exclusive biography, what we'd like to tell you the facts about his childhood story, his early life, his parents, his family background, his wife, and also we will tell you about the facts about Lissandro Martinez's family origin, his ethnicity his personal life, etc., and his struggle that genuinely shaped his path to become a winner from where he came from the grassroots to the big stage at Manchester United. You see, Lissandro Martinez, the footballer, has an inspiring story of hard work and perseverance. Lissandro Martinez was born January the 18th, 1998, in Gualagay, Argentina, town of the province of Entre Rios. It's about 235 kilometers from Buenos Aires, Argentina's capital city. The Argentine footballer was born to his mother, Selvina Carbrera, and father, Raul Martinez. Lissandra appears to have one sibling, his sister, Candy Martinez. From young age, Lissandra showed a remarkable talent and passion for playing football. His parents, Raul Martinez and Selvina, his mother, recognized his potential and supported him in pursuing his dream of becoming a professional player. Lissandra Martinez's parents were not rich from the onset. His humble beginnings began in his family's shelter in the El Molino neighborhood of Gulagay, Entre Rios, Argentina. Like so many children that grew up in this area, he suffered from poverty 
during his childhood and that shaped his thinking about life. Determined to get out of the slums, to achieve his dream to become a professional footballer so that he can one day help his family to have a better life. You see, Martin has spent his boyhood years chasing a football, or some people call it a soccer ball. As a child, he idolized Gabriel Heinze, Maradona and Leo Messi. Back then, you can always find Lissandra Martinez. Rest assured, whatever there was a pitch or, or grass or gravel, you can always find Martinez kicking a ball. At the young age of four, the footballer joined the local academy, Club Urquiza, where he was mentored and discovered by a local scout and football intermediate player manager Jonathan Diate from Diate Sport. Back then, Jonathan Diate scouted the boy, saw something very special in him. He took him under his wings, he nursed him, he shaped him, he helped him all the way from the grassroots, from early career to all the way to the big stage, from Argentina to Ajax to Manchester United. We will cover Diata further down in this story. Now to add on to this biography, as a matter of fact, he bears two nicknames, Butcher and Licha. We will get into how he got those nicknames later on. But for now, let's continue our story to introduce you to Raul Martinez and Salvina Cabrera, the people that brought Lissandra Martinez into this world. As far as his boyhood years were concerned, Lissandra would forever cherish this childhood photo he had with his mom. By looking at them, you can sense that enduring tenderness and love between Salvina and her only son this love between Lisandro and his mom has stayed like that for years and transcends of all affections of the heart. Lisandro Martinez's father, the first thing you should know about Raul Martinez is the fact that he's got terrible emotions. You see, Lisandro Martinez's father hiddenly cried his eyes out after noticing that his son was just about to captain the national team. To prove that, here's a unique video of that heartful moment Raul Martinez won't forget. The video you just saw is a bit of a fast track into this story, I know, but this is of his playing career and it is so important for this narrative as an example how important Lissandro is to his father. You see, after his son won the 2021 Copa America, everyone waited for his return from Brazil. Did you know, Raul Martinez hired a fire truck which Lisandro used in touring his family hometown of entire Rios in Galagoy. Now, judging by his looks, it appears that Raul Martinez had Lisandro in his late 30s or early 40s. We're not surprised to notice how Licha often calls his dad old man. The proud father raised a humble family and gave Lisandro not riches, but the spirit of reverence. Aside from his mom and dad, Lisandro spent plenty of his childhood years alongside his little sibling, his sister, Cookie. In the cookies of the boyhood days, Lisandro Martinez's sister had been his chocolate chip. Although she sometimes got into stuff and drove him crazy, she would always remain Martinez's little angel. In an interview, Licha once revealed he comes from a below average household and he truly knows what it means to go hungry. Hence football became his only way out. Put simply, Lisandro Martinez's parents weren't the richest of type. Salvina and Raul operated a close-knit family where food was sometimes lacking and looked as a commodity. Because of his poverty upbringing, there is always a soft side of Lisandro Martinez. This soft side allows him to naturally feel the pains of anyone who suffers. Despite having no money, despite the daily struggle for his parents to put food on the table, a mother's intuition and a father's struggle to make ends mean, to take the risk, 
they sacrificed all they had for the only son, as they saw the boy had special talent. The efforts taken by Salvina Cabrera to raise Lissandra wasn't in vain. You see, years later, she reaped the dividends of a motherly labor. To tell you this story, let's hear from Jonathan Diarte. But before we bring in Jonathan Diarte into the show, you need to know a fun fact, or actually an interesting fact, who Jonathan is and what he does. Well, Jonathan Diarte is part of the good agents. Basically, he operates in the domestic market in South America, which is pretty much called in the agency industry, the farmer industry. What does that mean? Well, that means that Jonathan Diarte is discovering young talent in South America in the domestic leagues. He brings them up and then he transports them over to the bigger leagues in Eredivisie, La Liga, uh, Serie A or Premier League. So with further ado, Mr. Jonathan Diarte. Hola Mick. Sí, ha pasado hola, tiempo hola. a mí. Voy a comenzar la pregunta presentándome. Soy Jonathan de Arte, 40 años de edad, de Buenos Aires, Argentina. Eh, tuve un paso como futbolista. Mm. Eh, Hoy soy CEO de, de Arte Sport Fútbol Agency. Para entender mejor por qué me convertí en agente y cuál es mi filosofía, tendrías que entender cómo crecí, cuántos niños como yo crecen en esta parte del mundo. Algunas personas llaman a esto mercado emergente, yo lo llamo América Latina, la tierra de la pasión y el deseo. Verán, eh, En Argentina y otros países de América Latina no somos tan privilegiados con la riqueza y las oportunidades que otros niños y personas tienen y dan por sentado en otras partes del mundo. Es por eso que nunca damos la vida por sentada y nos volvemos humildes para luchar por un lugar en este mundo donde podamos tener éxito para convertirnos en alguien. Es por eso que en mi humilde opinión, la, la razón por la que tenemos la bendición de tener tantos jugadores jóvenes talentosos que provienen de barrios pobres, que no tienen oportunidad de obtener mm. la educación adecuada, eh, con, tal vez convertirse en abogado, banquero, o en el próximo Leo Messi, Maradona. Oh. Pero sin embargo, los mencionados son nuestros modelos a seguir como perfecto ejemplo de que si trabajas duro y te mantienes fuerte mentalmente puedes lograrlo. Si esto igualmente no sería posible si no mm. sos descubierto por un agente o algún explorador como yo. <risa> eh, ves que la mayoría de los niños aquí a menudo provienen de familias rotas, descuidadas por por su padre, generalmente algunos recurren a las drogas, el alcohol, pero el vínculo para la madre es muy fuerte ya que ella se preocupa y quiere una vida mejor para su hijo. ¿Ves? Eh, aquí cuando una madre da luz a su hijo, un agente ya aparece en la sala de parto prácticamente. <risa> se llega a convertir ya que es la única salida de muchas familias. Los latinos tenemos que ver con la pasión, la familia, los valores, la ética, la determinación, el futuro. Eh, por eso decidí continuar mi carrera después de jugar para ayudar a estos niños a lograr un sueño, ofrecerles una salida de la calle. As for the story of Licha. It is not until now that we are starting to shape the future. You see, we have discovered who he is, where he came from, what circumstances he had and how he fought his way out from poverty to get into the grassroots and travel all the way to the big stage. Some people like to call it from rags to riches, but he, the butcher, Licha, likes to call it. I can feel the fire. It's time to do it. As a child, young Lissandro had a wish to attend a football school. One of the places where Lissandro got the opportunity to practice football was near his grandfather's house, where he grew up. One can easily say it was a very nice experience for him to get a football education there at the tender age of four. Then, at that age, he joined a local club 
Club Urquiza. For a period of four years, Lisandro Martinez kept receiving on and off the field football education with Club Urquiza. Back then, it was fun and games, but a decisive moment was in the year of 2006, that World Cup year. The young boy from Gulagai felt more motivated to be professional. The joys of seeing his hero Carlos Tevez shine in the tournament gave him some motivation. That year, Lisandro Martinez decided he will try for a bigger football academy. Following a successful trial with Club Libertad, he joined the club from the age of 8 to 15 years. A defining moment in his youth career came when in 2014 joined his idol Lionel Messi's former academy, the New World Old Boys. That year, 2014, Lisandro Martinez secured a successful trial with the great local Rosario New World Old Boys. Lisandro honored his skills and caught the attention of scouts. In 2017, he began his professional career with Defensia Justicia, an Argentine football club. Lisandro's performance were impressive and his talent did not go unnoticed by bigger clubs. Martinez made 55 appearances for Defensia after initially joining on loan from Newell Old Boys in 2017. In 2019, his dreams became reality thanks to the hard work and dedication through his player management camp, the Arte Vieragas and Bragnarek, who facilitated a way out from the grassroots. It was a significant move from Argentine club Defensia Justicia to AFC Ajax, one of the most renowned football clubs in the Netherlands and Europe. AFC Ajax scouts had traveled to Lisandro Martinez's family house to knock on the door. With Raul Martinez, his father, and Salvina Cabrera as his mother's blessing, Leisha accepted the huge challenge of going to Europe at the tender age of 21. To prevent other clubs from hijacking the July 1st, 2019 deal on 7 million euros, Ajax, through the push of manager Eric Ten Hag, hurriedly arranged for a medical earlier that year on May 20th. It was a big step in his career, joining a club with rich history and high expectation. A central defender and a defensive midfielder, Lisandro quickly integrated himself into the team, showcasing his remarkable abilities on the field, impressing manager Eric Ten Hag. To summarize his experience with Ajax, his spell with Ajax, one must start to say that during his first season with Ajax, Martinez played an important role in team success, helping to win the Eredivisie title and reach the semi-finals of the UEFA Champions League. He continued his strong performance in 2020-2021 season and helped Ajax to another league title. Martinez's performance was recognized with the call-up to Argentine national team where he made his debut in a friendly match against Chile in June 2021. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. Let's not forget that Licha became Ajax 2021-22 Player of the Year. Hence, when Eric Ten Hag left, it was his priority to get Licha to follow him to Manchester United. But before we continue to that story about Manchester United, we need to talk about The Butcher. How did he get that name, The Butcher of Amsterdam? Let's continue. Let's find out. As diluted, Leicha became a very popular player amongst the Amsterdam faithful fans and among his teammates, of whom he, as of today, not really aware of, gave him that nickname because how aggressive gets on the pitch. In an interview, Lissandra Martinez was once asked, Is it true that they call you the butcher in your club, Ajax? Why do they call you this nickname? Lissandra, upon hearing the interviewer's question, <laughs> laughed and then responded, It is most likely because I'm aggressive in my game. The truth is, I don't know who gave me that nickname. Also, it is because I am by nature a warrior and like to fight. My family comes from an ethnographic division known as the Amorendians. So in every game, I play with the warrior fighting spirit. I like to tackle each ball as the last. My teammates told me that the nickname suited me Ha, ha, ha. My teammates told me that the nickname suited me. The nickname suited me. Ha, ha, ha. We made it so far in this story. We've seen the rise of Leicha 
and his struggles to reach to the glory. We understood that the boy has talent, but in order to become successful, comes hard work, dedication, passion and a helping hand. As there are so many players out there that are in demand. What are you about to hear next is a remarkable story of the people who mentored him, who did everything in the power to fulfill his dreams. From being a poor boy from Guala de Bois, from the talent that it is to the journey of the big stage, all the way currently at Manchester United. So Mr. Diata, you specializing in finding, developing and mentoring young talented football players in the Latin America emerging market, such as your client, Lisandro Martinez. I'm interested to understand how you went about to make this happen for Lisandro and when was the right time for you to push for the transfer deal outside Argentina to another league, another country and for a bigger club for Lisandro. For example, you reached a point in Lissandra Martinez's development to elevate him to the next level in much competitive league. You facilitate his dream move to Ajax and then further down the road to England, the English Premier League and move to Manchester United. The question is for you, how difficult was it to generate the interest for Ajax to invest in Lissandro's talent as breaking into international market from Argentinian grassroots league as an outsider seems very challenging. Did you have to use or collaborate other agents and lawyers from other sports agency in Europe as an intermediate in order to get that deal done for Lissandro? And the second question in that case, who was involved? <laughs> Mickey, I am glad you brought this up. I think this is very good question that deserves an honest good answer. The answer is yes. It is very common practice in the world of football to get the best help as possible from other agents and intermediates who has the right network to facilitate as we talk about the raw talent that Lisandro has as an unorthodox center back. You have to understand we did everything we could for Licha. We had contact with various top clubs across Europa and, in the end, Ajax and Ten Hag understood Lissandro's potential, despite the critics that he lacked the physical attributes to make it. As you know that his performances has been paid off by now. You see, Lissandro became Ten Hag's trusted key weapon. Mm. And how he likes to build up play from the back, so you have to then visualize and understand how important Licha is to Eric as he, over the time, developed him, mentored him, and was a key recruit when he went from Ajax to now at Manchester United. Mickey, you know yourself from being an ex-player manager that at the end of the day, we care about the career of our players, therefore, we want to do everything in our powers to get them their dream move to the big stage. If we don't, we get hijacked and replaced. That is the name of the game. And it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. In Lich's case, we had to use multiple intermediates to get him to Europe. In this case it was myself, his main agent Rodrigo Villegas and Christian Bragnerick as negotiator slash promoter. We also had to collaborate with Bass Scotthorst from Essel Sports in Holland, who is now partly managing him from a European perspective. On the flip side of this transfer story is that you lose out of your potential earnings since you have to share it with the people involved it's true we only get paid once the deal is completed and when the contract is signed but all i can say that it was needed for licha as we needed to push and to hustle for him hence we need to use all the help we can get use all the tricks that we can think of we are simply trying to find the right club for him and that is what matters at the end you see as the main agent you have 100% contractual ownership and a moral obligation to your client, in this case Lissandro Martinez. You always want to take the best care of him, but then it is up to you how you are going to serve him the best. That means you will do anything to make it happen since you both worked so hard to get to this point. So to involve others to help you means you have to split the commission. I mean at the end of the day, you want to secure a transfer, so you tend to use people who has good relations with the club officials rather than you trying to build it from scratch. That is why you sometimes see big agent fees and estimates from 20 to 45% commission once the deal is completed as part of the transaction. 
Looking back from where we started, this is a game changer for Licha and his family. Considering how it all started, as a young boy back in the day in the early grassroots, to now being able to financially support his mother, father, and little sister, Candy, with a better life. Despite his success, Lissandro is still a very humble person. He made sure to pay it forward to the people who supported him and who gave him this opportunity to become who he is today. I am personally very proud of what he has become, a household name and professional footballer who is living his dream. That is our Licha, the butcher from Walaguay, Argentina. I mean at the end of the day, he proved his haters wrong, didn't he? But judging from the evidence that we've seen here, in this video, he has definitely proven the critics wrong by letting his performance on the pitch speak for itself. You don't need to be a tall centre-back to be rated as one of the best. You see what Leecher don't have in height. He compensates with his footballing IQ, his passion and aggression. He sets high standards for himself and never rests on his laurels. He constantly strives to improve and take on new challenges. Now, on this day of recording, Lissandra Martinez is still with Manchester United for another five years contract. His first season at the Theatre of Dreams led to Manchester United winning its first trophy in six years, becoming a World Cup winner with Argentina. But if it wasn't for that injury that he suffered in 2022-23 season, he probably would have been given the Player of the Year award. Now with his talent, drive and determination, Lissandra Martin's story is still unfolding. Footballing fans all around the world is eagerly anticipating his future success as he continues to make a name for himself in the world of football. This has been the beautiful story of Lissandra Martinez from grassroots to the big stage. Thank you for watching and please leave your comments in the video description below. I can feel the fire. It's time to do it.